Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl Krista B from Those Wrestling Girls and you know I have to tell you about my dope ass rock shirt that I finally got in the mail thanks to Ripple Junction. Ripple Junction is the best place to get all your authentic tees, whether it's WWE, whether it's The Office, whether it's any show that you love and mark over. You go over there, you order your shirt, you put it on and boom. Also, you have to use the code Those Wrestling Girls to get 15% off your purchase. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to RippleJunction.com, order your shirt, type in the code those wrestling girls, and you're also gonna tell them that we sent you. And on that note, it's your girl Krista B, and I am out. Hi everyone, welcome to Those Wrestling Girls. I know it's weird, it's just me, Queen PR, doing the intro, but it's a very special episode. And you know, Chris B and I both live in New York City. She's stuck in traffic. We have a very special guest, so we are just gonna get right into it. So, what I do want to preface this with saying is that I'm a huge fan of this today's guest, number one. And number two, I think one of the things that makes wrestling special is that it's not just the wrestlers that make special moments, it's the fans as well. Um, and I think we've all missed that, especially with everything that's been going on. So this guest in particular um, became a star in her own right and she was a fan. And so I'm just going to welcome Izzy to those wrestling girls. Hello. Hello. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm legit so excited to be here because, you know, I've always looked at your guys' stuff on Twitter. I've always seen it, you know, on my timeline and everything. And I was always saying to myself, I want to be on their podcast so badly. <sighs> so here we are. This is awesome. Oh, Thank you so much for having you're me. You're welcome. Um, that means like so much too because you know it's so it's so crazy to say that like like you know Krista B and I look up to to you and our you know those wrestling girls channels all about empowering women and Mm -hmm. I think you are like a key example because you are a young woman and we it's it's all a it's all for all of us. And I think so being able to have you on the show is very monumental. So thank you, Izzy, especially yes, for the kind thank words. You for having me. <laughs> so um, I didn't look you up um, like I would normally do for an interview. Um, and we like to keep our guests surprises. So we didn't even ask our fans because I really wanted to get to know you from you. Like I really wanted to treat you like any other guest and really just get to know you from your own, from your own mouth. Cause I'm sure, you know, you know, especially being a young person, sometimes it's like, like people are always kind of speaking for you sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. So I really wanted to get to know you from your mouth. So Izzy, how did we get here? How did we get to Izzy Mania? How did we get to your channel? How did you get into wrestling? I want to literally hear all about it. Yeah, so literally my parents introduced it to me. It kind of started with that, and I really fell in love with the sport. I thought it was so interesting and fun. And when I be- – and, well, I should start off, like, really at the beginning. You know, a lot of people, they know me as the Bailey girl or Bailey's number one fan, and that's really how I kind of got my – my name and I don't want to say like oh I got famous from Bailey no that's kind of how I got that name of being Izzy and then as I grew older I was like I really want to do this I want to be in that ring one day I want to be holding a championship belt when I'm older so I kind of realized like I want to make that dream happen even though I'm four years away from being 18 when I can really step into the ring. So that's kind of how I started, you know, doing the interviews for my show, The Hot Tag with Izzy. Yes, I have my own show called The Hot Tag with your girl Izzy, where I preview NXT, AEW, and all other WWE shows. I get interviews with these incredible people. And I just, I live the dream, you know. It's so much fun just to be able to do this at such a young age and really just like I said, live the dream. So really, that's kind of how it all started. My parents introduced it to me. When I got older, I really realized that this isn't just a dream anymore. This is a thing. This is um, this is a realization and like I can do this. So that's really, that's kind of how it all started. And it's still going. <laughs> I love that. So are you, are you from Florida? Yes, I am from Florida. I'm currently living in the lovely Orlando, Florida. I'm actually going to be moving soon. I'm still going to be in the Orlando area, but just moving houses, as they like to say. We're really excited. 
May 21st is our closing day, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, that's so exciting. It's like the spring, and then you're like moving into a new house. Yes, we're really awesome. excited here in Orlando. We are super excited. We're planning and everything. So it's a little stressful, but definitely a lot of fun. Yeah. And once it's all settled, you'll be fine. So I'm, I'm guessing like being in Florida was really good, at least being close to the wrestling scene, because I hear so much about um, just that area, especially like when NXT was like just fully where it was. So it was probably easy for you and your family to go to shows. Um, what are some of the memories that you have just from those shows? I'm, I'm, of course, you can see yourself on TV, but just like before the kind of like the blow up of things, you know, the Sasha and Bailey matches, like what are some of your early memories of wrestling? Yeah, some of my earliest memories was going to FCW, which if some people don't know that was NXT before NXT. You know, I used to go to those shows. I literally used to play with uh, Roman Reigns' daughter. And then when he would have his match, she would go to the guardrail and she would watch him. It was like, those were the really fun memories because, like, that was just classic wrestling. You know, you loved yeah. it. You really were into it. So that's really my earliest memories, but also just enjoying it with my family and my parents, just sitting down on the couch watching the pay-per-view getting ready i remember we had we would have to put the pay-per-view on like the computer and because there was no wwe network back then it wasn't really a thing so i remember that and it's just crazy to say back then because now i still now i sound really old but <laughs> but those are really my earliest memories you know going to fcw oh, and just that. loving pro wrestling with my parents no, I love that, Izzy, because I can literally relate to you, like those memories that you have with your family. Like I couldn't help but think back of the memories that I have with my family, because that's one of the things I love about wrestling was those that nostalgia of it. Like, you know, yeah. I love that we can both relate on like WWE <laughs> Network not being a thing. Like that is so funny, even though like I was ordering like pay-per-views, like real pay-per-views yes. um, mm -hmm. on like cable. Um, and I'm only 31, but it's just so, I love that we were able to like kind of grow up in that era where it was just like, it brought everyone together, mm -hmm. um, which is super, super cool. So, um, I hear that, um, you were saying that you want to, you want to be a wrestler, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Um, so who are some of your favorites now? Cause like, you're sort of like infamous for being like a super fan of one particular wrestler but like who are some of your favorites that like when you're you know thinking about training or your character like who are some of your role models that you look up to yeah so that's like such a like crazy question because i feel like as i grew older i never really had a favorite but if in terms of like studying which i think is so important like match studying I'm going to have to go with MJF. And I know that's mm. such a crazy one, but he literally is picture perfect. He really is. He's the most mm. perfect wrestler. He's great on the mic skills. And when they boo, like when the crowd boos him, he's able to just like snap back at them. And I really like that. And I will always admire that. In the ring, he's really good. He's not like, oh, his promo skills are great, but he can't back it up in the ring. He can back it up in both. And that's what I really like admire about him. Um, other favorites, um, I mean, I know I'm sticking with the men, but uh, Adam Cole, I think he's extremely talented on the microphone. You know, he gets a lot of that tone, which I really appreciate. And I remember just getting a lot of advice from my peers saying that, you have to change your tones throughout your promos. Um, and then I have two more people, Charlotte Flair. I feel like she she's just, she's such a role model in so many ways. Um, you know, she just, I really like how she was able to form her, like her own legacy. And I really appreciate that because she was always known as Rick Flair's daughter. Now she's, um, it's kind of like, Charlotte Flair's dad. It's kind I of know. like that, if that makes sense. I say yeah. that all the time, and it's so bad. And like, but I kind of love it also because, like, yeah. I have a thing where it's like the daughter is the one that's taking Ric Flair's legacy on mm -hmm. and might be his record and all of that. So, yeah, it's I really, totally love that. It's really cool to see that. And then my last person is somebody that I will always just love and look up to somebody that I would always admire is Tessa Blanchard you know like I feel like she's just such a beast in a way like in a way she's just somebody that I truly strive to be you know in the ring 
how she is in the gym, you know, I always DM her and I'm like, I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, you're literally paving the way for girls like me. So those are really my four. And I know a lot of people are expecting me to say Bailey, but, if, but Bailey will always have a special spot on my heart that I will look to, where I can look up to her and just really admire her. Yeah, no, I love that. I think she would also be impressed that you are being a student of the game and you're not just going with just like the normal things. Um, so I do love that. I just learned a little bit about you. Like, I love what you see in MJF. And I'm like, is there a heel? And is he? I don't know. Oh, no. I, I really love MJF. He is so great in the ring. So I don't know. There's a little, there's a little bad side of me. If you get <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. Like, I definitely see a great performer in you, no matter, you. you know, uh, what it is. Um, but I want to welcome uh, Krista B. Hi. Hi. What's up? I'm so sorry. New York traffic in especially near oh, my house. Is so uh, it's lit again. Everyone's out. It's, everybody's out. And my spot, my place has this lounge night next door. So it's just like everybody's here. I am everybody's so sorry I'm late. You are okay. <laughs> So I was just asking Izzy about who she, because she wants to be a wrestler, and who she sort of looks up to, like as far as like um, you know, just like studying wise. And and I and her answers were like um, NJF, um, name them if if I'm if I'm missing this, um, Tessa Blanchard. Um, did I miss what's the other two? Uh, Charlotte and Adam. Charlotte. Cole. Yes, and Adam Cole. And I was like, I see that. I'm like, is there a heel in Izzy brewing a little bit, like in her character in the future? Because that mix is very interesting. <laughs> Especially with MJF. Like, I would watch that. He's so good. But He's it's so not just because, like, I, I enjoy watching him. No, it's, I think it's really just studying him is so important because he literally has everything right from his posts on social media, his way he talks on the mic and then the way he wrestles it's perfect package perfect package i agree he's real talented it's just and his, he's so good at being a heel mm -hmm. but like it, you hate him like i hate him <laughs> you was on fire i wouldn't even spit or blow when you hate but he's oh, so okay. good at it. He, he's really talented i do want to see where you know he goes with aew like how far his storyline can go how well, he can evolve, evolve his character within um, AEW. So, MJ up on that one. I love that. Um, so, is there any promotion that you're particularly into right now that you're like, because there's a lot of wrestling on every week. Like, Krista and I are always like, okay, it's a lot. But what is a sh like, what promotion is show right now where you're like, okay, I need to watch it like live. I need to see what happens. Yeah, there, you know, there's not really a specific one. You know, I just love wrestling. Honestly, I just love it. No, that, yeah. I, I can totally see that. Yeah, loving wrestling. I'm sorry if you hear this weekend. My dog is like, one, wants to be in, in the, um, the in, in, <laughs> sorry. Um, but loving wrestling, I was just talking to a friend of mine. I had posted like a little, um, a little clip of like rock. Stone Cold mm -hmm. to watch Kurt Angle, and she was like, "Oh my God, this is my childhood." She used the F word, but you know we're gonna forget. <laughs> her. But it was just like you grow up watching something and you see it evolve into something so big and so grandiose. It's just like you really ever get enough of it. Although there's been times me and P have gotten enough of it, but it's like it's, mm -hmm. it's something that's true to your heart. It's something that yeah. you're always gonna be in tune to. So. I mean, loving wrestling and being able to jump back and forth between different promotions and different shows and stuff just to see how one is moving opposed to the next. It's, it's real eye-opening because we only had WWE yeah. for a really, really long time after, you know, they bought out WCW and ECW. You know, we have Impact. We had TNA, which is now Impact. And now we have AEW, which is like literally their numbers are soaring. You know, they're doing amazing stuff. Blood and Guts was amazing to me. I don't know about mm -hmm. how you guys felt about it. But I was good. You know, let me turn it on. Let me see what's what is given. And it really did this thing for Jericho to be 50 and still selling like crazy. It, it was a really good um turnout for me. So yeah, I think I'm I'm gravitating towards AEW now, and I don't even know how I feel about that. 
That is a very interesting statement, Izzy. This is a special like thing because I would never think I would hear Kasumi say that, and she just said that. And... <laughs> so it's like a, we grew... it's an exclusive. Yeah, right, it really is exclusive. Because <laughs> we grew up watching WWE, WWF, you know, whatever you want to call it, and you know, it's not like we give other promotions a chance, but you know, when you just like gravitate towards something because you just know it, you're just like this. Mm-hmm. But I love that AEW. I love that there are other promotions that there's other options out there. You can see different type of characters because, like, I don't think you know. I like I, I like that MJF feels like AEW, and like I don't see him in WWE but like in a good way and I think that's yeah. fine like I think that's great and you know in these days and that makes me think you know because you want to get into the business more um what sort of because you still have like four years before you even start training but you kind of already have like a good advantage to some extent and I know it's a hard business I don't want to say you have a great advantage but where do you want to see women's wrestling by the time you're like suited up ready to get signed like where do you envision women's wrestling like compared to where it is now you know i feel like women's wrestling it's kind of hit is like it it's hit his its peak already not like in a bad way but i feel like it's gotten to the best it can be and i feel like you know all the women in today's like generation have already made history and I feel like the next generation they're going to make even more history so I really just want to see that you know I want to see people trying stuff new start trying some new things you know like I really just want to see something different so I think overall you know continuing to make history as they like to say and really just paving the way for the next generation and then the generation after that so I feel like that's going to be very important I agree and I love that like girls kind of already have you to look up to in a way only because you. uh yeah like you're one of one at this moment just because like social media and wrestling like this is all kind of new territory like the like how it's going like you mm-hmm. know we've seen like fans get like notoriety in the past but i think because NXT was growing at the same time Sasha and Bailey were growing and then you were such a fun part of it. Like, and then you being able to become a certain agent and start a YouTube channel, like you're like the first generation that was able to do that. So like, how does it feel to know that you're sort of like paving the way for like a whole new generation of like young wrestling personalities, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's a really awesome and cool feeling in a way because like knowing that I'm paving the way for girls to go into the wrestling ring young it's really cool you know I always see these girls that I'm like oh I started wrestling training and a little part of me is like wow I kind of started it but I don't want to be like oh I'm trying to you know show off and kind of you know make myself feel happy in a way I'm like oh maybe I started that maybe I really and like once you go down the rabbit hole and you're like maybe I really did start that in a way but I feel like the coolest part is that it's going to create competition and I love that you know Mm -hmm. it wakes me up in the morning to go work out in my gym it wakes me up to do that extra mile to do that extra rep so I feel like that's the really cool part about it so overall it's like I said it's an incredible feeling and it's a true honor to be that person paving the way for the next generation or current generation with young girls getting into wrestling so definitely it's really awesome I love that I love that too I love how you're so inspiring and how like P said earlier how you have these younger girls come up to you and you know give you things that just drives you but I kind of want to get into and maybe I missed it or maybe I didn't so if I missed it just let me know um this whole thing with you and Bailey, like I was just like this little girl with the biggest eyes in the world when Bailey came out. Oh, every it's adorable. Time, it was so adorable and so cute. Like I see how you are with Bailey is how I am with the rock. And <laughs> I'm, I'm a whole adult now, but as that young girl, even though I was never at a live show with the rock in it or whatever, that's just how I saw myself. Like, probably yeah. wearing the Rocks, um, a, a makeshift of the Rocks Versace shirts, or wearing an eyebrow, because I couldn't raise my eyebrows, <laughs> and tape up here, and you know. <laughs> how did you know that Bailey was that one for you to, to look up to, and you know, cause this, I want to say fanship with her, because you know, some yeah. of us 
beginning. I don't know if it, if it evolved to friendship or whatever, but how do you know it was Bailey for you? You know, I really think it was just because she was so different from from everybody. You know, she interacted interacted with the crowd, which I thought was so different from what I was seeing every week on Raw, every week on SmackDown. So that's really what kind of drove me to her. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm really into her. You know, I enjoy watching her in the ring. She's fun. She's different. So that's really the main reason. <laughs> and how did you – so – and correct me if I'm wrong. When Sasha and Bailey had, it wasn't. I don't think it was their takeover match, but when they they was having one of their most infamous matches, and Sasha came and like snatched. Yeah, it was that takeover. Yeah, it was that takeover. Was that scripted or like did it? Just I don't want to know if it was scripted. Right? I don't want to know. I don't well, want to know. I don't, I I don't want to know if it was scripted. Well, I, read I think that secret. I just want to hear the Thank you. Thank you, Izzy. Yeah. Protect the fan in me. Thank you. No, no, no. I'm not saying this. <laughs> yes, it was scripted. But, you know, people on Twitter was like, oh, my God, that that was, you know, fake. It was scripted. It was this. It was that. And, you know, we just want to be here to dispel this rumor, even for what it is. Like, it was good work. And that's all we needed. It was to great do. work. All we needed it really to do. was. But how did you feel? Like, as a fan, I wanted to beat Sasha up for you. <laughs> I promise you I did. Like I swear I wanted to be her up for you. So how did you feel in that moment? Like you a fan celebrating one of your favorite wrestlers and then another one comes out and just like tears your dream apart in a sense. How did you feel yeah. about that? Well, I don't think I'm ready to reveal the secret whether it was scripted. You don't or not. have to. You don't have to. <laughs> not revealing it, stop writing about it, period. <laughs> okay, well, it was definitely a crazy experience. In the moment, I was pretty sad because, as you can, as if you remember, I was sobbing. But it was just so weird and funny. I still don't know to this day why I cried. Um, I always remember when, because I was sitting next to Bailey's dad because Bailey, um, Bailey's dad, and um, her stepmom came to the show, and. Um, my parents were like, oh, you can sit in our seats while the match happens. We want this, like, this is your daughter in the ring. She's making history, y'all. So um, so I remember when I was crying, he literally picked me up and gave me to my dad. I, I will never forget that moment. And it was just it was just such a funny and crazy moment. And it's so weird just to think that, like, that really changed the course of just women's history and, like, women's wrestling. Not women's history, but, like, women's wrestling. Like, kind of my career, because everybody will remember me as the girl at NXT TakeOver Respect that headband was stolen. So, definitely a crazy and surreal moment. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Was that TakeOver Brooklyn, or that was... That was TakeOver Respect. Okay, we're take over. I'm like, it was Brooklyn. She was in my hometown. She would have got. <laughs> <laughs> we would have had your back no matter what. Izzy. No matter oh, what. And we have your back now, too. So don't worry. We have your back, Good. too. For sure. And Krista B, shut everything down now, right? So everybody. Don't ask about, about it. it. Yes. Let her have that moment. Let us have that moment as wrestling fans. Yes. Stop asking about it. Love that. Sure and uh, you guys. <laughs> I also like how. Um, you, like you're very driven. Like I, I wish I was that driven when I was your age. And I love how you were like, you know what? That's more competition. And I think that's such an athlete, like an athlete way to think, where it's just like, you know what? Yeah, like you know, this is fun and sweet. But like, I hope I'm pushing everyone to be at their best because I get up every morning and I try to be at my best. So I try to work out every morning, and I personally need to know what motivates you when you just don't feel like it. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my God. Turns that on. <laughs> Man, it, sometimes it's a little hard, but most of the times I really just think of everything. I don't want to be like everything I've been through. Cause, but really I just think of that, you know, like from my first match and how, like how that kind of like changed my view of pro wrestling, you know, and how many people that like turned like their backs on me, you know, I think of them, um, I think of the girls who are trying to take my spot or replace me. You know, I always think of that. So I think that's really the part that gets me up when I don't feel like doing it. So like I said, those are the main two things. Um, and also, I always think of my parents and I always think of like everything they've done to me, done for me. And like, 
what I would want to do for them and like, I don't know, make, making them see me succeed. Like I want that to happen so badly. So that's another part that makes me get up when I don't feel like working out. <laughs> I love that. Now I'm like, I need, that's great motivation. <laughs> like I need to really be thinking about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, I say, oh, I'm going to go to the gym, especially every time I see that membership come out of my account. I'm like, I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. go. I promise you, I don't go. Because it's just like, I, I feel like I already run around like a chicken with no head. You're so busy. <laughs> so busy. Like, it's ridiculous how busy I am. Like, I don't even remember me half the time. And it's just like, so for you to have that motivation, I'm just like, girl, keep motivating me. Like, send me affirmation. <laughs> something in my DMs to keep me going because... That's that's really sweet. That's really that's really really nice of you to you know put those things first in order for you to keep moving. I mean, most of us do, but sometimes we get sidetracked. Sometimes we know, yeah, things don't go according to plan. So for you to be so consistent and so focused and so squared in on your mo- using those factors as your motivation to work out and to keep going is is real beautiful and it's really empowering for those yes. who, for for myself and P. As she said, like now she's gonna rethink. <laughs> because you know oh uh, i also have another thing that uh chris v has helped me a lot on since i've known her and so your youtube channel hot tag with izzy um you interview a lot of wrestlers a lot of people and you are very like well composed and it's really fun interviews so i get like really nervous and like star crazy like around wrestlers and stuff like that and you like as a like we're journalists so like you really can't be that and like Chris is really good with that and she's always just like girl calm down yeah you How- tell her like literally I was just like because at the end of the day everybody's human you know mm-hmm. a lot of especially in the wrestling world you hear about these wrestlers not being able to take the thing not being able to you know They just want to be normal and, you know, so it's just like you want them to know that it's okay. Like, all right, I'm just like you. You're just like me. I don't want to fangirl all the time. But I do make it known. Hey, is it? I'm going to fangirl for like five seconds. (laughs) I just had this moment. And they were like, yeah, sure, go ahead. But if you don't let them know and you just automatically do it, it kind of just like turns them off. So I had to tell a listen, sis, they're human. They're like you and me, you know, just treat them as a human being instead of a fan because wrestling, being cool or cordial or even like friends with a wrestler, a professional wrestler, it's like the most humbling experience ever. Mm-hmm. It's, I feel like it's sometimes being better than it being, it's being better than friends with like an A list celebrity. I like, agree. So mm-hmm. humble and down to earth. So, yeah, I'd be telling yeah. you, you just. Yes. I know. So, like, so Izzy and Christy, you're good with that. What have been some of your favorite interviews so far? What are some of your favorite, like, moments, of, like, that you would recommend on your YouTube channel? Yeah, so really all, I always say this after my interviews, like, that was my favorite interview. And because each of them, they have so much meeting, bu- meeting behind them. Mm-hmm. You know, my first Zoom one was with Josiah Williams. And Josiah, I consider him a pretty close friend. Like, I... I freaking adore him. It, like he came to we last week. Was last week? Yeah, last week was my birthday, and he came to my birthday dinner, and we hung out and everything with his wife, and it was just so much fun. So like, I love Josiah. Then after that, I think it was Red Velvet, Alex Gracia, Jonathan Coachman. Nice. First off, Coach, love him. He's he's somebody that I also look up to, and somebody that I always have advice from. Like literally, I feel like I kind of started the hot tag kind of from him you know he was really the one where he was like I think you can do this and I was like okay I'll, I'll try it but some of my absolute favorite ones like top ones um my TLC review of Bully Ray I love Bully I I really he's like my uncle Bully he told me to call him that so it's kind of set in stone um <laughs> and then my Rail Rumble preview with Dave LaGreca freaking love Dave he's awesome um and one of my other ones was with uh, Diamond Dallas Page because that was just such a crazy and surreal one. And that was just like, 
awesome and just so incredible just to talk to him. It was a huge honor, but there were some very exciting ones in the works, like ones that I'm like, how did I get here? This is crazy. Like these people, they've been on shows that I watch, like Jimmy Fallon. So I'm like so excited. I know. I hope it all works out and everything. So I'm super excited and, you know, it should be interesting. But, you know, my YouTube channel is It's Izzy Mania. For those wondering, you can go check out all of my interviews. But I, I have some really exciting exciting ones you know i interviewed brandy Rhodes recently she was freaking awesome just to talk to so inspiring somebody that you can really look up to and there's so many other ones like in between that you are just gonna love from thunder rosa to laney luck to the voros twins from tiktok like there's so much and it's like it's a lot of fun just to talk to these incredible people and these larger than life wrestlers it's so much fun it's something that i absolutely love to do yeah First I'm, I'm, i have to I'm sorry. DDP? Yes, I know. I said the same thing to myself when I was interviewing him. I was like, wow, this is happening. I was nervous. I was like, wow, this is really cool. And then I would say that that was kind of like my first big one on Zoom. But I've like I've interviewed so many like other people like face to face from Pat McAfee, Beth Phoenix, uh, Tommaso Ciampa, um, he just had a birthday well, too, like yesterday or Scott, something. Scott, yeah, it was. Scott Hall, like, I get to interview these, like, incredible people, and it's just so much fun, and it's the fact that I get to call this, like, my quote-unquote job. It's so much fun. Like, I just love to do this. This is, like, the best part of the job. Like, yeah, <laughs> as a job, and I don't think Pete looks at this as a job either, because we just have so much fun doing it. But your name and legend, like, your name and legend that – we watched growing up and added to our like and i love bully ray billy ray mm -hmm. oh wait and how can i forget how can i forget one of my favorite people on the planet medusa alundra blaze i just oh interviewed her God! i know it was so much yeah, fun we love, her. we love her we have really been trying to get her on the show for a long time too because yes. she is everything that those wrestling girls is all about <laughs> Definitely, definitely. We really yeah. are just trying to get her on the show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have these legends, and and I love DDP. DDP stuck out to me more because one, my 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 middle name is Diamond. Two, um, <laughs> his story is is really inspiring. Like who he came into wrestling at a time where wrestlers retire. Like he started wrestling at thirty. I know that's what I think is so cool. And like he teach, and then he taught all of these other wrestlers how to like be in tune with their bodies, like. Right, um, yeah, I wheelchair ridden, okay, and now mm -hmm. he's walking and he's upright. We already know Mick Foley and his hip and his knees, and yeah, everything. And it's just like you teach these people how to do yoga, you get them like in tune with their body, you get them more, they're probably more agile now than they were when they were in their <laughs> in the ring, and that's all because of DDP. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. I need and to have such a good heart. He does. Yeah, he really is. He's such an awesome guy. And just talking to him was so cool. Literally, there was a moment during the interview where he asked me how much, like, how many more questions I had. And then he said, by the way, you're doing great. You're literally so mature. And you remind me of one of my daughters. I think he was talking about Lexi Nair, who's from AEW. And I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. That's such an honor. But it was, like I said, it was such an honor to have him on the show. And like, like I said, everybody that I interview, it's like... I really appreciate it because they're taking the time out of their day to come onto my show. And I always want to make sure to respect their time, make sure that I'm not like, I don't know, just thinking off while they're talking. I just really, I really appreciate them coming onto my show. You, I am so admiring you because you are so like well-spoken and respectful and you know, you, you understand, um, the space that you're taking up, like my pen, you like my pun, Krista. Um, oh, like, <laughs> like, and you, um, in a very mature way, like, are, are taking responsibility of it. Like, you're like, you know what? I do have people that look up to me. I do have legends and that I can consider my peers at one point that I can look up to and I can call, but you're still such a nice person. And like, Thank we were you. able to chit chat like a little bit before we started recording. And I was like, you know, it's so, it, you know, like 
it's nice when these are nice. And I love that your energy is awesome. And I really hope you. that, you know, like we can stay connected and then we cross paths like in the future. And yes, I, I, definitely. You know, I, 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 the, the energy, like, don't ever change. <laughs> like, you know, like, you, you know, you like have it, you're competitive, you're focused, you're determined, you're ambitious. And to have those traits at your age as a young woman is literally everything that those wrestling girls stand for. Am I, Krista, I don't know if you want to. Nail on the head, nail on the head. Please please on Thank you. Remain humble, remain compassionate, remain ambitious, you know, remain phenomenal because I feel like, and not just in wrestling, like people in general, they would get, they they will put their accolades on social media, and they'll be like, "Oh my God, you're famous now! You're a celebrity! You're this! You're that!" And then they'll get this big head, and then once things start to go downhill, they have nothing to show for it, and it's just mm -hmm. like, you did all of that for what? Like, I feel like being yourself and compassionate and ambitious will take you much further than getting that big head from a few people like in your accolades on social media and then you have nothing else to show for it after that like people tell me in picture shows oh we're famous where's it we'd be like nah no we're not we're the same way a lot that's it right. yeah definitely definitely um so is there any kind of um because it's also fun uh the fact that you have such a long career ahead of you is that you can like look back on like these interviews and like they're kind of like a time capsule almost like mm -hmm. you know so what is something that you sort of want to like always something that you want your fans to remember your viewers to remember something like motivational that like you want to look back and be like you know like that was izzy that's still me i want to inspire people you you get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's such a great question. You know, I really want people, I, you know, I know everybody's going to remember me as the ballet girl. And, you know, I feel like as I grew older, I kind of, I didn't want to step away from that, but I want to be my own person in a way. So like, I always wanted to like, I, that's why I kind of start, stop dressing up as Bailey, going to wrestling shows. And I, like I said, I just wanted to become my own person. That's why I started the hot tag because that would keep my name around. And I didn't expect it to be as big as it is now. And I'm not saying it's like this huge show, but like, I'm pretty proud of it. You know, I'm getting these incredible interviews. I have these incredible contacts. You know, I was just on the bump mania week. And they were talking about the hot tag right before I got on. And that was just such a surreal moment. And then I'm the first ever what's next uh, team correspondent. Like, this is so cool. So I really want I really want people to remember me as the girl that did crazy things at a young age from having her first match at 11 years old from being able to take the critics and people who were saying that I'm too young and just throw it to the side and say, you know what, I'm going to do my own thing. And then being able to go on three W or wait, I'm sorry, go on two WWE shows, one of them two times, the other one, like for the first time, it's just, it's so incredible. And I really want people to remember my journey and how I had this evolution from being the Bailey girl to being a broadcaster to now being a superstar one day. It. it will definitely happen. You no, know, your consistency. Yeah. <laughs> your consistency is like unmatched. You know, thank you. you. Young age. I, I don't remember being this consistent at your age. P, do you remember being this consistent at her age? And just like, how do you? But hey, when you do what you love and you find right. out at an early age, and you want to become more invested in it. It's just gonna come naturally to you. So. Kudos Thank you. Love to you, definitely. Yes, and you always have a community within those wrestling girls, within Krista B and I. If you ever need any, you know, any random advice or you know support and anything, because it's you know we're all like kind of growing at the same time, which I think is also really cool. Like I can't wait for like five years from now and just be like, holy you know what, I can't believe how far we've come. So um, I just want to let you know, those wrestling girls in our community, is, our platform is always there for you. If you need any us to promote anything or whatever, you know, we're here for you. Thank is there you. anything? I really appreciate um, it. Oh, yeah. Um, so before Krista B uh, does her notorious outro, because we really missed you for our intro. I, just to I am so sorry, y'all. I was like, I got to start this. Oh, I was like, 
Oh my god, I hope she doesn't like sorry, dog. I hope she doesn't like you know, get nervous and starting it. So, <laughs> At least I did good though. So. All right, I, I, I take you these word for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let everyone own know, Izzy, what to expect. This episode will probably drop maybe four to six weeks after we record it. Um, but where can people find you? What can we look forward to? All that good stuff. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Pro Wrestling Tees across the board. It is It's Izzy Mania. Make sure you put in the it's. Like I said, It's Izzy Mania on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I have my weekly show, The Hot Tag with Izzy. So proud of it. It's my baby. I preview all WWE shows and even AEW while catching some incredible and fun interviews with some, with some incredible people. Um, there are definitely some interviews that are coming up, some really big ones that are in kind of the process we're kind of get getting things started but make sure you go follow me subscribe and then do you see this awesome shirt that i'm wearing well it's from homage.com and i am a brand ambassador from them and you can use code it's izzy mania for 15 percent off your first order and make sure to capitalize each letter each the first word of each word if that makes any sense yes. first letter of each word so i'm sorry <laughs> but yeah that's where you can find me make sure you go check out homage.com and my uh pro wrestling tea shop and then twitter instagram and youtube it's Izzy mania <laughs> yes i definitely will and you definitely gave me another website to buy some shirts so thank you yes, very much i was awesome. gonna ask you about that too yeah thank you <laughs> i just want to show off my shirt real quick because ahead, I, I really like it it's then, now, and forever. And I just like the burgundy. Like, the burgundy really just needs a pop. It's from 500 Love. Burgundy is literally your color. Is it? Oh, thank you, girl. Thank it you. is. Appreciate that. I know you're Robert Ripple Junction. Ripple Junction? Um, 500 level. Got it. Yeah. So now we got two places to get shirts. Yeah. So go to homage and we're going to put all of Izzy's links in the description, guys. So make sure you pick that out. And I'm going to hand it over to Krista B. Well, guys, I wasn't here for the intro, which I'm sorry about. But we know I'm going to do the outro. Before I do the outro, make sure you follow us on all platforms. YouTube, Those Wrestling Girls. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Those Wrestling Girls. We're on TikTok under Those Wrestling Girls, which we're definitely going to jump back on it. Make sure you subscribe to our Patreon. A sound off will be coming from me. Words of PR will be coming from her, from um, PR. Follow us on our personal Twitters. I'm Miss underscore Krista B on Instagram, Twitter. P Queen PR is Queen PR with three underscores on <laughs> Instagram and Twitter. And on that note, it's your girl, Krista B. And Queen PR. With the lovely Izzy. And we are out of here. Bye. Bye.